I upgraded the 2013 Trashcam Mac Pro to a 12-core CPU, and here is why. What's up guys, Fabria and welcome to Shides of Tech. This is the 2013 6.1 Trashcam Mac Pro and will be my editing machine for the future. In a recent video I explained why I got this, which is basically a 7 years old design hardware Mac to be my main machine for 2020. And one of the reasons was upgradability. This machine is not easy upgradable as the previous 2009 generation has a different approach but all the internal components are user upgradable. And thinking about the 2009 Mac Pro, in the next video we'll compare it with this machine, so stay tuned for that. In this video we're going to upgrade the base model to the maximum 12 core CPU, 64 gig RAM and 1 terabyte SSD. We'll go deep in the benchmarking before and after and we'll see if it's worth the price. Those are the specs of the base model we got on eBay. And as you can see, we paid a little extra, but it already has a 64 of 1866 MHz DDR3 memory installed. If you are interested, we made a direct comparison with the late 2013-27 inch iMac we upgraded last year with all kind of benchmark, so be sure to check it out. This machine has a really good cooling system and even the base model can support up to 12 core CPU and Dual D700 graphics. Since we are going to leave the base model Dual D300, we shouldn't have any problem of overheating at all. We're going to upgrade from the base model Intel Xeon E5 1620V2 4 core, a thread 3.7 to 3.9 GHz, to an overkill Intel Xeon E5 2697V2 2.7 to 3.6 gigahertz 12 core 24 threads and of course we could have used the intermediate 6 to 8 to 10 cores but we wanted to go maxed out and this seems the most future proof even for AK video editing and we will of course use it in the future. The Xeon CPU are being discontinued from server farms and they're available for cheap on eBay. But if you are interested in the upgrade process, be sure to watch my entire video, the next video where we will focus more on the steps and experience of the upgrade. While in this video we'll focus more on the performance improvement. To access the motherboard you have to remove the metal cylinder shaped cover and then disassemble almost all the Mac, starting from the top single fan and then divide it from the I.O. and the dual GPU assembly with the heat sink. Once you free the CPU it's just a matter of removing the old and inserting the new and of course reapplying the thermal paste. For me it took about an hour and I found this process really simple following the iFix guide and it was even simpler than the iMac upgrade we did last year. In the meanwhile we upgraded also the SSD with just one screw and you of course could upgrade the RAM as well. They are meant to be user accessible and upgradable in terms of seconds. And now we are so excited to see how the performance improved. In theory we are doubling the CPU performance and raw power, but it will be too optimistic to see a double performance improvement in real life testing. So we started with the GeekBank 5 test to evaluate what is the range of this machine. And as expected we had a reduction in single score performance since the base speed of the 12 core is lower 2.7 against 3.4 GHz so this could be a disadvantage in single core operation but a small 13% reduction in my opinion is totally worth considering that we got 120% improvement in the multi-core score basically 2.2 times with a score of 7500 this is a tremendous improvement improvement. But the most interesting thing is that it goes really close to the top-notch 2019 Mac line, competing with Macs that cost basically three times more like the iMac Pro 8 core and the 2019 or 2020 Mac Pro 8 core which starts about five grand. This means this is the main reason why I got this old machine in the first place. But testing further the GPU we did the Cinebench R20 test 
which measured the CPU raw power and we score an even more impressive 135% improvement, 2.4 times with a score of 3300. Of course, those are some synthetic benchmarks, so we continued with the real life test. In case you didn't know, we use this Mac for video editing with Final Cut Pro with 4K 30 videos and some effects, LUTs and text applied. The base model had all kind of bottlenecks, starting with the popular Bruce X test. The new configuration scored a few seconds less 28 versus 31. I think the main reason is that they have the same GPU and it's a very GPU in intensive test, so the CPU doesn't make this big of a difference being such a short clip. To get in the 20 second range I guess I should get any GPU. But when we started testing real life video editing the new 12 core CPU started to shine. I applied one color correction to a 5 minute 4K clip and left it rendering. It took a whole minute and 13 seconds less, wow, it's very good. And then we exported this same video in Apple ProRes 42 and it took 7 minutes and 30 seconds less. So rendering and exporting it took a total of 9 minutes less which is a huge improvement for me. Now the, this Mac has 64 gig of RAM and I barely use half. The CPU even while exporting doesn't exceed 60% usage and I'm using an internal NVMe SSD. I think that the only improvement that can be done is an external GPU with a better memory. But apart from this, I think I have removed all the bottleneck and reached basically the bottleneck of the software optimization. So I think that for my usage, a 10 core or even an 8 core could have been more than enough. But for 2020, of course, we want to test 8K video as well, so stay tuned for this. In fact, one big improvement we saw was in the Blackmagic Raw test, where we had 140% more FPS in the CPU test and 52% more FPS in the Metal test. So we could, in theory, handle 4320p30 at a compression ratio of 5 to 1 with decent FPS, really powerful machine indeed. Then we tested the thermals, we tried three consecutive runs of the Cinnamon test that runs the CPU at a maximum load, but the strange thing was that both the CPU maxed out at around 74 degrees Celsius, and the reason is that when I opened the Mac that I remember you that was used, I found the single top fan packed with dust, really a lot of dust and also a cut fur in the motherboard. So before closing up I cleaned it with an air dryer so the results are not really comparable since the cooling system can perform now at its maximum power with the fan being hardly audible, really close to idle noise. In this video we won't be testing the gaming performance, so check my previous video for that, but these machines are not made for gaming, they don't go beyond 20 fps average on Unigen Event test. Also this upgrade did not affect the booting times which is around 47 seconds. So in conclusion let's talk about the cost. We swapped the CPU from a 4 core to a 12 core doubling the raw power performance and getting basically a 30% reduction in video editing time. The CPU used on eBay can cost around $200 plus $10 between Apple screwdrivers and the thermal paste. One hour of your time and it was really easy I can assure you. Be sure to watch my upgrade process video if you want to know more. I will say this is an incredible cheap upgrade for what you get. As I said I could have enough power with the 10 or 8 core, I think that the sweet spot could be the 10 core 2619 V2 that has a single core higher boost 3.5 and can cost $40 less. But Unless you have my same need for video editing as I explained in the comparison with the 2013 iMac, for simple tasks and even for simple 4K timelines, a maxed out 2013 iMac would serve you better and cost you basically not half but a 30% left. To give you perspective, this maxed out Mac Pro costed $1750. $3 against the maxed out iMac 2013 that costed $1250, it's 
$500 difference for 50% faster exporting time. But you have to consider that you have to spend extra $400 for a 4K monitor, keyboard and mouse. So this was it, my take on the 12 core 2013 Mac Pro a grade. Let me know what you think and which used Mac you would buy. And also stay tuned for the 2009 Cheese Grader Mac Pro comparison with this 12 core Trashcan Mac Pro. So thanks so much for watching me so far. Be sure to like or dislike this video, comment and subscribe for more videos. And as always, stay tuned on Shades of Tech. Ciao!